Live from Asbury, it is Sunday morning worship. Thank you for joining us this morning as we gather together from home or from our phones or online. But through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are able to gather together and worship here today. So thank you for joining us on this glorious day. So in order for us to worship together, to um, work on those relationships that they, we have with each other, we are able to use technology to um, experience things together. And we use uh, menti.com for uh, connecting with each other through the, the miracle of the internet. And um, if you are using your computer or your phone, you can, and actually those who are in the congregation here now, uh, you can use your phone and uh, contribute as well. Go to menti.com and enter in this code for today. And you can answer that first question there, which says, asks, what special plans have you had to change in the past five months? We're looking at plans today. And so just type in your answer there. It's anonymous, and that'll pop up a little bit later. And so also, if you have any prayer requests uh, for those who came into worship today, there were prayer cards back at the entrance. Uh, uh, you can write on there, and we'll lift them up during worship. Uh, and also, you can put your prayer requests in the comment section on Facebook uh, that we can lift them up later during worship. Or you can go to our website, www.asburyunitedmethodist.org uh, slash prayer wall and post them anonymously on there. So as we come into worship, I want to let you know what's happening uh, as we build the community. Uh, we have a new partner uh, in mission in Springfield this year that's with Jarrett Middle School, which will eventually be building their middle school where the Portland site uh, once was. Although I hear, I just heard that students will be coming back to Portland because Sunshine, which they were going to, uh, was not completed. So there is a possible ministry opportunity uh, to uh, welcome those students back for another short season, I think until October. But we are committed to Jarrett as well, and they actually have a prayer walk the last Sunday of every month at 9 a.m., and so I invite all of you, as Jarrett certainly needs our prayers this year as they start in a new way, uh, and if you are, uh, we can walk around in the school, or if you are uncomfortable with walking around in the school, you can uh, walk around the perimeter of the school, like Joshua walking around Jericho in, in prayer, not for the walls to come down at Jarrett, but uh, to lift up uh, the people inside who will be working in new and different ways to um, uplift uh, the, the children of this community. So I hope you can join for that. And also, we have a tradition of praying for the students, uh, I'm sorry, for the staff, the teachers, the staff uh, who are making all of this happen. Uh, there's a prayer list. Uh, if you go to the uh, link on the um, worship bulletin or the email that was sent out. It was, it's something through Padlet and kind of claim uh, one or two people that you would love to pray for as the school year starts and hopefully the, the year, um, year round and maybe even send them a letter or a note of encouragement as well as um, the school year starts. And as school starts up, uh, we will ha be having our own Back to School Sunday next Sunday, uh, so I hope that students and teachers and staff can uh, attend worship that day wherever you are so that we can pray for you, lift you up as the school year starts. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, one thing that plans have changed for uh, was uh, my ordination, which was supposed to be happening in June at annual conference here in Springfield. And we had great plans to have worship at the ordination on Sunday morning and uh, with all the, the uh, leaders of the Missouri Annual Conference and friends and mentors and, and 
people of the community uh, to celebrate, not just me, but the, uh, I believe, eight other ordinands as well. Uh, and this is kind of the culmination of, of my journey of becoming a pastor and uh, kind of the, the final um, acknowledgement by the bishop laying his hands on me. And this is now happen happening in a new and different way. Uh, so the bishop and the conference have put together a video kind of to acknowledge what has happened and what will be happening. So please la watch this video. Hello, I'm Bishop Bob Farr of the Missouri Conference of the United Methodist Church. I want to congratulate your pastor, Reverend Erica Gravely. Erica was recently elected an elder in full connection of the United Methodist Church, the Missouri Conference, at the virtual clergy session held on Friday, June the 5th. Membership in full connection means that Erica's Missouri Conference colleagues have recognized her call, her gifts, and her fruit for ministry. The elder in full connection shall have full rights, including voice and vote, in the annual conference. As an elder in full connection, she will be in covenant with all other elders in the annual conference and will participate in the life and the order of an elder. Due to the global pandemic affecting our ability to gather safely in person, I will have the privilege of ordaining Erica on Saturday, August 22nd in Columbia, Missouri. Unfortunately, the public will not be able to attend this special worship service due to the public gathering limitations. It will be live streamed and recorded. As her church community, I encourage you to watch this service to offer your congratulations and blessings on her commitment to enter a lifetime vocation as an elder in the United Methodist Church. Please join me in congratulating Erica on this important step and responding to God's call in her life. Erica, congratulations and welcome. Thank you, thank you. So this is taking place um, this coming Saturday and there's a link provided again in the bulletin and the email that was uh, sent out to the email list. Uh, so while I would love for you to be there with me and support, um, we will again depend on the Holy Spirit being there and uh, working through that. So thank you for your help, uh, your support in this journey. So, we have some other celebrations going on this week in new ways, and so we just want to lift these people up celebrating birthdays this week. So, happy birthday to Angel Kathy, to Tim Avey, and to Dale Clements. May the love that you share with others year-round come back to you on your special day. So, as we enter into worship, may the peace of Christ be with you. Oh, I'm sorry, before we start, I want to point out the answers to that question, that mentee question. What special plans have you had to change in the last five months? So we have vacation, summer visits, and now back to school and work cha changes. Vacation, mm -hmm. family visits, Volunteer activities, yes, canceled vacations. That's a lot on people's hearts right now in the summertime. Family reunion, birthdays, visiting with extended family, doctor's visits, vacations. Couldn't teach summer school in June, yes. Going to our church and worshiping, but we've shared with you, praise God. High school reunion was postponed for one year. Mm -hmm. Family vacations. Not being able to meet our new grandba grandbaby. So plans have changed. The things we had hoped for had changed. But we will look forward to doing these plans in different ways. Let us come into worship with these thoughts on our mind. Thank you. 
So plan A didn't work too well back in March. Then came plan B, which was postponed. And plan C, well, that was reconfigured. And then plan D, we're still trying to catch up on delayed celebrations. And now we come to the kickoff of a new season. It's time to go to plan N and celebrate new beginnings in new ways. We'll take a look at how God's people have had to start from square one and reimagine what it means to begin again for the first time. You have taken this moment to come into worship, so worship fully. Put down whatever is in your hands that pulls you in another direction. Put down whatever is on your shoulders that burdens you. Put down whatever is on your mind that distracts you. Come into worship and meet with the one who has plans for you. Would you pray with me? O oh, Holy One, in many different places we honor your presence among us. We come to you with songs of joy and shouts of gratitude. We carry heavy burdens and sighs of suffering. As you welcome us into this time set apart, lift our burdens and receive our praise. Shower us with your grace and anoint us with your spirit. Bind us together that we may be at peace with one another and be strengthened to go forth in service to the world. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. And now we have Andrew Scott and Sean Goshi singing a song that they wrote and composed, Angels Surround You. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for that gift of music. <sighs> that we can do that in new and different ways. I'm sure there was a plan A of doing this in worship together, but a new plan is formed. So thank you. So before we look into scripture, I want to, uh, at um, uh, Samuel 16, I want to go back a little bit uh, to when Samuel was uh, called to anoint a king. So after 11 judges, so that was a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. After plan K, God changes the plan again and chooses Saul to become the anointed king of God's people. The prophet Samuel is charged to make this act of God momentous and sacred. Thirty are invited, a large piece of meat is prepared for them, and they eat together. The next day, Samuel gives him a message from God, prophesying over him his, his several next steps, which include a procession of prophets and music that will herald the Spirit of God to fall upon him and enable him to prophesy among them, anointing him with oil as ruler over God's inheritance, and concluding in a sacrifice of burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. This was a celebration to mark the kingship of God's uh, kingship for God's people. But Samuel's hope in Saul 
food soon falls short as he does not live into the plan that Samuel sees. Then God comes along yet again with a new plan. Hear these words from 1 Samuel 16, verse 1 and 11 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected, rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king from among his sons. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for he will not, we will not sit down until he comes. He set after and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May God add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his word. Thank you, Janet. So I attended Bradley Love's graduation uh, last weekend and heard the stories uh, in a new way, in a new setting. And I had heard, sitting on the grass outside of Asbury, how Kathy, Bradley's mom, had been planning graduations for the homeschool orchestra when Bradley was only three weeks old. So she had been planning them year after year for the hundred, well, soon to be hundreds of kids walking through these hallways and moving through and graduating. And I'm sure over time, she had developed in her head the, the music that would be played and, and the words and the songs and the blessings and the ambiance and the people present for this graduation that one day, one day, her kids would graduate, her first son would graduate, and she'd be able to put all this uh, in, in, uh, to reality. Hmm. So we experience those traditions too, just like Kathy. And we develop these plans for the time when it would be our turn to be a part of them, or our turn to uh, set these plans into motion. And then things happened. Things got postponed. And we're wondering, what, what do we do? Back in March and April, we had a sense that this pandemic would end soon. How many, how many of you thought this was going to be a couple months, we'd kick it to the curb, summer would come around, uh-huh, hands are raised here, that uh, you can raise your hand online too. Um, that, you know, summer would hit, you have fresh air, healthy fruits and vegetables eaten, we kick it to the curb. But as the months marched on and we step into this new season with a new school year, the end dates have been pushed back and back and back, and the losses are starting to settle in. So this is a loss. But not really. I mean, people complete their education, people turn a year older, people retire, holidays happen. Yes, and, and life moves on. Time goes on. These things happen. But we've missed something. We've missed the plans that we have been forming in our head, possibly accumulating for 19 plus years. So Samuel, we hear in scripture, was down to. 
He had hoped that the plans that went into action with Saul made great changes, but they didn't. And God, God called him to set things in motion again. And we can hear the lament that echoes through us today. This is not the way that I planned it to be. I wanted things to work out differently. The damage has already been done. The celebrations and rituals will not be the same or have the same weight. My bright hopes and plans, they kind of went like a balloon, just into nothing. We sit in a slump with head and hands along with Samuel. And God speaks. How long will you grieve? Are we grieving? I mean, no one has died in these situations. They're just celebrations, momentous occasions that just didn't happen. But when you find yourself crying for no real reason, or when you just want to hide under the covers for the day, when someone in your household says that you're sighing a lot, Something's happening. It's an odd form of loss. And psychologist Pauline Voss calls it ambiguous loss. Determined back in the 70s, it suddenly has new meaning in this pandemic. It's a type of loss without closure or clear understanding of what has happened. See, Loss isn't always connected to tangible things. Sometimes it encompasses the disappointment of missing out on a long-awaited event or opportunity. And outside of a pandemic, people miss out on these things in regular life due to illness or an accident, the weather or a crisis. I mean, think of the child whose family had to move to another state right before graduation. So that the child graduated but didn't graduate. The child never got to participate. So we are grieving, in a way, these ambiguous losses, just like Samuel grieved Saul, who was still alive. It says in Scripture, Samuel didn't see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. Like any loss that we are grieving, it's not cured by a process of stage one through five. And those, those stages of grief were actually labeled by Kubler-Ross for the ones who are dying, not the ones coping with death and reaching at stage five, you're, you're suddenly cured. It, it doesn't really work like that. We're in this swarmy, warmy process of, of trying to understand, and, and then we remember, and then we have to work on things again. It's not clear cut. So there are many ways not to cure. Um, I'm sorry, to not cure this grieving process, but to ease the weight of grief from ambiguous loss. So God comes along to Samuel and commands him, fill up, fill up your horn with oil. So that's, that's kind of an odd request for today. So what he's saying there is that uh, in those times to mark someone as a ruler in that time, in that area, they were anointed. It was a ceremonious occasion, and uh, oil was poured on their head. And so to transport this oil around, it was, it was filled in uh, an animal's horn uh, to carry it around. So what God is doing is, is calling Samuel to, to get up, to go through this ritual. This is going to happen. Bring, not, don't just go out and find someone and, and then get your oil and, and come back and do this. No, you're going to pick up your horn with oil now, and we're going to do something. We're going to do this ritual. 
that you initiate. Our lives might be turned upside down, but we can still take the time to mark the occasion of what is happening on the inside. Sing happy birthday over the phone. Have concerts online. Do a card shower. Have the graduation on the grass outside. Boss says, social rituals are containers of values and are ceremonies that help us through tough transitions. The tough transitions we're going through right now. They remind us that, and those around us, that a transition with its gains and losses has taken place that we mark this time, that we have the ritual, because going through the motions actually means something on the inside. And Samuel has the ritual, as uh, Janet read earlier. David is picked from his father's eight sons. Okay, again, that's plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, yeah. Plan G, and he's Plan H, and in the most unceremonious way, just walks them through one by one. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, where's, where's the last one? And Samuel anoints him. That's all it says. There's, there's no process. They, that, just that phrase, Samuel anoints him, and then Samuel went to Ramah. That's it. No meal, no guest list, no rooftop discussion, no prophesying, no procession, no music. But somehow, from that day on, it says in Scripture, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David, in verse 13. And David became the best known and the first successful leader of the Israelites and established Jerusalem as the dwelling place for God and God's people. What was important in that moment is that the spirit was present. The ritual may not be the same, but it is needed. The work is there. God is working on the inside of us, seeing us as honored, valued, and this act is needed in this particular transition of life through the tough transitions that we go through in working in school and getting, um, having graduation or uh, in two people uh, living life and finding each other and work, wanting to work things out together and those in that tough transition, becoming married. That we honor the presence of the Spirit of God in that moment, in that ritual, is doing something far more than any uh, paperware that we can have for, for uh, cupcakes on a table. That's all on the side compared to what the Spirit is doing in that moment, in that ritual. Not only that, but it also works on the people who do come together in some form. Dr. Boss says, rituals also serve as a social space for unrestrained expression of emotions and for active connection with our personal social network, our friends, our relatives, our acquaintances, that enhances social support and resonates joys, appeases pains, shares hopes, and mourns the truncation of dreams. It's great to see Renee and Clark here in worship today because I remember Renee and Clark's wedding. Happened at the end of June as restrictions were being lifted that we were able to come together in some odd way that I've never seen a wedding done before, but we had it. Not only did they need that wedding, but we needed that wedding. 
We needed to be part of that experience and celebrate together and honor the work of the Holy Spirit between these two and witness that. Friends, we need Larry Ballinger's celebration of life. We need to come together and mourn and grieve together and celebrate the joy of his blessing of his life which will take place here on Tuesday, but it will also be on Zoom. It's odd, it's awkward. Uh, Dr. Pauline Boss also said how she experienced a funeral online a few months ago, but the spirit was working in that moment, in that space, and that is what is important. We need our students' graduation to happen, even though it happens in an odd and awkward way, in a place that we had not planned. Friends, you cannot stop life from happening. So do not stop the ritual of the moment from happening as well. God speaks the words of encouragement and action. Fill your horn with oil. Do this. Do this important thing. It won't be the same, and that really, really stinks. But that is not what matters. What matters is that we tap into the action of God working on these special people in these special times, and the Spirit of God mightily does the rest for them and for us. Amen. So we get the chance and the opportunity to celebrate the graduates who have achieved their accomplishments and are part of the Asbury community. And we usually do this in May, but that didn't quite so happen. We had to go to an alternate plan. And so now the graduations are beginning again we're figuring out how we can do it safely and so at this time graduations are happening in new ways and so we wanted to honor those graduates as they are experiencing their rituals uh, their graduations that are happening so um, we have pictures of these graduates here first we have bradley love son of Bill and Kathy Love, and so he graduated on August 8th, just recently here at Asbury, along with uh, other students from Play and Sing His Praises. And his plans for the future, Bradley will be attending OTC and exploring digital art and or animation. If you have any special memories of Bradley or any of the other graduates here, please feel free to, to pop them in the comments uh, if you're on Facebook Live. Uh, it's, it's fun to hear those memories as I heard of him at his graduation. And next we have Kaylin Ann Rio. She's the granddaughter of Janet Bowman, who was uh, sharing the scripture this morning. And she graduated on June 26th of this year. And her plans uh, are to go to OTC for two years and then earn her behavioral science transfer degree. Then she's going to transfer to MSU and finalize her degree in psychology. After that, she's hoping to become a juvenile probation officer. And then finally, we have Elias Spiegel or Eli, son of Rick and Julie Spiegel, grandson of Marsha and Fred Marshall, or, who are here with us. And um, he hasn't actually had his graduation yet. He finished his courses in December, but graduation will uh, be taking place in a virtual ceremony this Wednesday from OTC. And he's graduating with an associates in the arts and his plans for the future will to be a substitute teacher and eventually a history teacher. So in planning graduations, we desperately wanted a ceremony to celebrate 
the hard work that has happened. And um, with Kathy, with Kathy Love, she was starting to plan his, his graduation, Bradley's graduation, when he was three weeks old in 2001. How long were you envisioning this for these graduates? The, the plans that you had in your mind that was going to happen, the, the get-togethers, uh, seeing the other graduates. But things have changed. And so, graduates, you have this new vision that you have developed in your time of study together. And your new vision is needed. It's needed in this new world, with new experiences, with the new normal. And how exciting that you get to be a part of that. You get to be a part of God's new plan. So blessings to you in all the hard work that you have done, the things that you have accomplished, that you may feel the, the Spirit of God upon you that God has been with you through your studies and is with you now and will be with you in your future plans. So before we pray over them and the, the others who are celebrating uh, accomplishments and, and other things of life right now, we ask you to lift up your prayers, your prayers of joys and your prayers of concerns. Uh, you can do that online in the comment section uh, but I'll give you a, a chance to uh, lift them up now. We have requests for the for prayers for and congratulations to our graduates. We have requests for prayers for the Ballinger family. Prayers for Jack Latson, who's been very ill. And the Aves asked for continued prayers for their son Bob for the healing of the pancreas and digestive system. In addition, we have the prayer requests that are on our, on our screens. Also, Patty Blatton has asked for prayers for her family and the loss of her sister. Let, the, let us take these prayer concerns to God, to God. Let us pray. God of infinite plans, you had a plan when the world was created. You filled your horn with oil and you poured your care and intention into your creation. You had a vision of us living well together with you and each other. But plans fell apart, and in your grace, you turned to plan B and C and D. We had hopes and dreams for a glorious 2020 and the special occasions that we wanted to honor and celebrate well. The graduations, the weddings, the concerts, the birthdays, the births. But they fizzled through, even in the change of seasons with hardly a notice as we canceled or postponed. Hear our heavy sighs. Be with us in the quiet moments that should be full of cheer. Surround us when we cannot feel the congratulatory handshakes, the warm, welcoming hugs. <clears throat> we lift up those who need your care and comfort in this unusual time. For the family of the Ballingers, of Larry Ballinger, for Jack, 
for Bob and for Patty's sister and, and Patty's family. For those who cannot mark accomplishment in usual ways, who grieve in usual ways or mark the passage of time in usual ways, Encourage us to keep filling our horn with oil. Help us to rise up, take the step forward, wipe the expectations away, and to begin the rituals again. Help us to find what is important to honor the work that you have done on the inside and point to that and mark this sacred moment in a new way. We give thanks for the joys that have come through in new ways. But the celebration of these graduates and other joys in our lives. We pray your blessing upon these graduates and all who have reached accomplishments this year. Pour your oil of honor upon their heads. Mark this sense of accomplishment on their souls that their hard work and determination remain with them through these odd times, that they were made intentionally for such a time as this, and the knowledge that they have gained, the vision that they possess can be put to good work for the betterment of your creation. This is no coincidence. This is your plan. Give us a creative spirit to even create new rituals that draw us closer to each other to celebrate life and your movement in it. Through the gift of your son, we see how you can take the mundane and turn it into blessing. How even death and the ritual around it can be turned into life. We join together in spirit and pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So we also have this, this ritual in worship of giving, of giving back. How it transforms us, how it changes us. And as we give, something happens to it. The Holy Spirit works through that giving, not only for the receiver, but also the giver. So you can uh, give your offering through many different means, which are uh, listed on the screen. And um, those who have given in the last month, uh, we have collected for the uh, for Jarrett for the new school year and I just want to show you those online if you can see this is a result of uh, the spirit working through people and um, being able to give in this odd time so what you see here are 400 folders 300 packs of I'm sorry 30 packs of paper we have 60 binders, 100 pencils, 25 sharpeners, a slew of dry erase mar markers, and some uh, socks as well. People have showed up and turned out and are giving, are sneaking in this church during the, the weekday hours and still giving. So we thank you for the gifts that you have given. And so let us offer this prayer of thanks and uh, this prayer of thanksgiving to God. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, we thank you that 
while the, the ceremonies and the rituals that we have in our mind aren't taking place, that we are able to do something physically and respond to the blessing of your Holy Spirit in our lives, the gifts that you have given us, that we can turn around and do something physically, to do something with the, the gifts that you have given us, and we return the blessing to the students of Jarrett. So may you bless these gifts here, the gifts given online, the gifts mailed in, and the gifts that were brought into your place of worship. May they be blessed. May those who touch these supplies feel the love, the love of people in this community that care for them, but most importantly, that they feel your love, that they are valued and cared for, and their education, their knowledge is important, important for their well-being and for their plans in the future. We lift this all up in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us close with this final song, Everywhere I Go. Everywhere I go on this road, high and low, where I go, I go with you. There's a city that calls me by name. There's a city that calls me by name. Yes, as I run this race, I am cheered by the saints. There's a city that calls me by name. There's a future that runs through my veins. There's a future that runs through my veins. And there's nothing on earth that can stand in the way. There's a future that runs through my veins. Everywhere I go, on this road, high and low, where I go, I go with you. So I won't be afraid, this my hope come what may. Where I go, I go with you. Where I go, I go with you. There's a spirit I cannot contain. There's a spirit I cannot contain. The same power that raised Jesus up from the grave. The same spirit I cannot contain. Everywhere I go on this road, high and low, where I go, I go with you. So I won't be afraid, this my hope come what may. Where I go, I go with you. Where I go, I go with you. Now your breath upon these bones, your fire in my soul, your kingdom is my home, and I don't walk alone. Everywhere I go, on this road high and low, where I go, I go with you. This my hope, come what may, where I go, I go with you. Now everywhere I go, on this road high and low, where I go, I go with you. So I won't be afraid, this my hope, come what may, where I go, I go with you. Where I go, I go with you. Amen. So may the Holy Spirit be with you so that you go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. And love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.